So the next part of the process is the mixing mastering phase, um, which is where we actually affect the sound of the recording after we've recorded it, um, either by adjusting the levels of the each individual microphone um, or through the use of effects such as EQ, where we can adjust the level of individual frequency or frequency bands. Um, also dynamics processing, which allows us to adjust the loudness of the recording. Um, and also uh, things like uh, reverb, um, if we've recorded in a, in a really dry hall, we can add a little bit of reverb tail. Um, and usually uh, the mixing mastering phase involves uh, a combination of all, all of those. Um, and so the next part uh, of this process here is I will go to the mix window and um, you'll see that in uh, and, and just about every um, software, whether it's Pro Tools or Audacity, um, is going to have some kind of window like this where you have faders which allow us to um, adjust the level of each individual microphone. Um, and you'll notice that I've already made some adjustments um, because I've already listened to this and done a little bit of mixing. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and listen uh, to each individual microphone so you can actually hear what they sound like by themselves. So here's the RTF. All right, so you get a lot of the room sound, um, but it is kind of close up, so you get a little bit of clarity. And here's the room. So that one's a little bit um, kind of like the ORTF, um, except it's a little bit farther back in the hall, and you can notice that it's a little bit wider of an image as well. Um, and then lastly, here's the spot mic. So there you can hear like the real clarity of the articulations compared to um, these these room mics. Um, and then when we add them all together, if we go back to, to where we had it, about 5 dB and negative 10, um, then you can hear this balance. <laughs> And you'll notice that um, the spot mic obviously um, takes precedence over the other two microphones in this particular hall. It's not always the case. Um, it just kind of depends on how we've set up the microphones. Um, but in this particular one, um, that kind of maintains the precedence, and these other ones are just kind of tucked in behind it. Um, but you can mess around with these faders all you want. Um, it doesn't affect the actual audio file. It just affects the signal afterwards once we bounce everything out. Um, so you can mess around until, you've, you, until you find the balance that you like, um, and it's total personal preference. Um, the next part is where we would add EQ um, to maybe each individual track if I was really mixing this. But um, for an audition, I wouldn't really recommend using a whole lot of EQ um, unless, you, um, unless you really trust your ears um, to make those decisions um, mixing-wise. Um, because it does take a lot of experience to really use EQ effectively. Um, but I will show you um, some dynamics processing so that we can really adjust the loudness of the recording. So I'm on the master track here. You see the master down here. So I'm actually adjusting the level or whatever effects on that master for the entire uh, recording. Um, so all of these mix in together. And so what I'm going to do is, um, if, if I play this back right now, let's get this guy out of the way actually. If I play it back right now, you'll see the level here on the master. It really doesn't go above negative 10 at all. It really doesn't even go above negative 15 until maybe the end. Yeah, right about negative 15. Um, so in digital audio, zero is actually clipping. So zero is, is the absolute um, top of the loudness spectrum. All right, and everything below it, the negative numbers is, your, is where you want to stay. Um, so we don't we don't want to hit zero, but a nice listening level. Um, if you're listening like in the car, or if you're obviously the audition committee is listening um, with like a CD player, you're gonna want to get your your top loudest level to as close to like negative four, um, negative three, really at the most um, uh, for your loudest material. All right, so we're gonna have to boost all this up because we're only at like negative 15 right now. We wanna get more middle in this yellow area. And I do that by the use of um, a dynamics processor. Um, this is the Isotope Ozone 7, it's a mastering plugin. And this is actually what we call a, ma uh, a maximizer. And it has a couple of parameters. So right here we have the ceiling. This is um, where we don't want the recording to go past this. And we're, we're gonna say negative 0.1. Um, I'm gonna say like negative two actually. So that brings the ceiling all the way down there. 
um, so that the recording will not go past negative two, which we said negative three was like the absolute most, uh, but we'll just go ahead and say negative two for the ceiling. If I bring this threshold down, that actually adds makeup gain um, to, to the actual signal, which makes basically just makes it louder. All right, and so let's play it now now that I've brought that down. All right, you can see that it's already going up a lot more. And let's bring it down even more. All right, let's start from the beginning again. All right, that's pretty good. Um, I could probably make a, a, an adjustment just a little bit um, and bring that down just a hair more so that we're getting closer to that negative um, six, negative five area. All right. And so that's going to be a lot more uh, enjoyable for the audition committee so they don't have to keep turning up the volume on the CD player every time um, that they listen to you. All right. So let's listen to that again. All right. That's perfect. All right. So that, like, that last little blip there was about negative five. Another perhaps easier way to add loudness to, to your recordings is through the use of normalization. Normalization um, basically just adds gain uh, to the clip to bring whatever the peak level of that clip is to a target line. Uh, for instance, if the peak of this particular clip um, is negative 15 decibels and we want that to be brought up to negative three decibels, our target line for normalization, um, then the normalization plugin will just add 12 dB to the entire clip. It's really that simple. Um, and so let's go ahead and do that. We have a stereo recording here that we did uh, with a zoom recorder of the same excerpt, uh, recorded at the same time as these other microphones. And I'm going to select that clip. I'm going to go to audio, uh, audio suite, other, and normalize. And it'll bring up this dialog box. All right, so we have the difference here between peak normalization and RMS. We're going to stick with peak because peak is exactly what I just described. It's just going to add gain based off of whatever the peak is. RMS does the same thing, but it does it based off of the average loudness throughout the entire clip. Um, and because of that, it can actually cause your recording to clip. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick with peak. Um, here we have our target line, um, which is set at zero right now. Um, and we, we discussed earlier when we were using the maximizer that our target line was between negative three and negative five decibels. This is where we want the, the loudest part of the clip to be. And so let's set that to negative three. And then we'll hit render. And there it is. So um, it is added um, gain to the entire clip to bring the uh, peak level of the clip up to negative three decibels. All right. And here is what you get. And you can see the level here, that's around negative three decibels right there. And so those peaks were hitting right at negative three, which is where we want it. Um, and so basically you get the exact same um, result as using a maximizer. Um, however, I still do recommend using a maximizer because of the transparency. Um, a lot of uh, engineers will agree that um, normalization can sometimes add um, some, some more noise floor to the actual recording. And um, speaking on that, um, whether you're using normalization or maximizing, um, the idea is to get your recordings to be as loud as they possibly can when you're actually recording it so that um, we, we can basically do as little processing in the back end as possible. Because the more processing you're doing, if it's a much um, uh, softer recording in the beginning, um, then you can hear this, this noise floor. All right, so there is a, a particular noise floor uh, when you're recording anything. And when you're recording such a soft recording and you're having to boost it, say, 12 decibels like we did here, you're also boosting the noise floor. And this is what we call the signal-to-noise ratio. So the idea is to make sure that when you are recording to do sound checks and make sure that you're recording at an acceptable volume um, when you're actually doing the recording um, so as not to um, have to add a whole lot of gain um, in, in the post-production phase which then in return adds a whole lot of noise to the recording. All right, so that's kind of the idea there. And just like I showed you, we can edit the same way in Audacity as we did in Pro Tools. 
uh, we can also normalize the exact same way. So let's take a look at these clips. I'm going to select the first one. Um, it's very easy. We go to Effect. We go to Normalize. And you'll see that it says normalize maximum amplitude to negative three decibels, which is exactly how we did it in Pro Tools. You can, uh, you can keep remove DC offset, that's fine. Hit OK, and there you have it. Same thing. All right, and we would do um, the exact same thing with the clips. So normalization, uh, regardless of Pro Tools or, or Audacity, GarageBand, whatever, um, it's all the exact same process and pretty much produces the exact same results.